Yes. TB Photo X 1.5 to FX and welcome back to another video. Well, it has been a while since my last uh, video update, but um, yeah, as uh, so you know, uh, life's what happens when you make other plans. Well, as you can see, with two of the books that I have here now is by one of my favorite photographers, the uh, sadly deceased uh, Leonard Nilsson, uh, who has been quite the uh, person when it comes to medical photography. So yeah, I actually went to the Modern Museum a couple of days, uh, some time ago, uh, where they actually had the exhibition, The Photographing Human, uh, where they actually showed Leonard Nielsen's electron microscope and Hasselblad camera that he used to take some of the most brilliant pieces of, you know, photography uh, in the world that are still relevant today <coughs> when it comes to medical photography. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna start now with this little piece of kit that I managed to get from a new Tradera yeah, a seller that is, I think it's actually a legitimate photo store. Uh, but for, before that, I'm gonna do a little bit of a mention. This is the macro lens that I have been using uh, to, up to this point. It is the Sigma. Uh, EX and it's the 105 millimeter f2.8 macro. I have had a video about this lens uh, on YouTube uh, since before. I know it's not really that liked video because uh, I did a little bit of filming with this lens on the D7200 and I know it wasn't really that popular but uh, anyway it was basically just showing off a little bit of the lens uh, as such. I didn't use a tripod and it doesn't have vibration reduction. But anyway, this here is a piece of Nikkor history. It's a little bit of an obscure... Yeah, I'm probably gonna put this water glass on the floor actually to make a little bit more room here on... Yeah. Let's see if we can do something like this. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. And uh, here we go. I'm probably going to do some B-roll of me opening this. And it is the Medical Nikkor Auto 200mm f5.6 lens that I have been able to acquire. Uh, there are a few other little, you know, uh, pamphlets about it. Uh, I think this is uh, a fig that has been photographed. And yeah, there was a lot of uh, cool, neat uh, little information about it. Uh, let's see here. And this lens is a little bit special. I'm gonna pull it up here. Let's see. Here it is in all its glory, actually. It has a built-in ring flash in it with also a modeling light that is... Actually, guys, I think I have a way of doing... This is the Nikkor medical lens. Uh, let's see, we can probably do this more properly, so bear with me a little bit because, yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a career day moment. But anyway. A few exposures later. Okay, so I'm back and uh, yeah, you can see me now in my professional clothes. Uh, for you guys who don't know, I am actually a registered nurse. That's my daytime profession. So yeah, I guess that part is out in the open now. Yeah, basically. But anyway, the Nikkor medical lens. This was developed in the 1970s as I've been, been able to establish for medical uh, photography of all different types. Mostly this was used in surgeries when you had to do a pathology report on the findings. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's when this came in very handy for, uh, as a piece of handy piece of kit to use. But anyway, I'm gonna go through a little bit what's in the bag here when you get it. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, the brochures, these, uh, are a little bit as such and then you have the manual for the lens and it goes a little bit about the different types of connections the inputs outputs and so on 
uh, of what is what with the lens and so on. This has been made in a couple of different iter generations I've been able to establish. Well, this is from what I've been able to tell is the second generation of this lens. Uh, the previous generation had a little bit of a different layout out here, it was completely in black and white and it didn't have color. But more about that in a second. Uh, what do you else get in the bag? Well, you get the special flash cord that uh, I'm going to talk about later. It's a three pin type. I think the previous model, the first generation, also had a four pin connector. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a little bit of a compartment here. Let's see if I can get everything out. You get a PC sync cord that is threaded on both ends. Uh, yeah, so you have two special cables, or rather not the PC sync, but in a way you have two cables that you need to use this flash. Uh, and also you get this little, let's see if I can pull it up here carefully, this little compartment with uh, six uh, magnification lenses uh, that are threaded and uh, they think I what the, they go to from this one is the sh most shallow version and it's the 1 8th and it goes up to this purple one which is two times magnification uh, so in essence this is for you technical inclined out there a 200 millimeter macro lens with the ability to go up to three times macro. So you have a reproduction rate of three to one on this lens. And some of the sample images that I'm probably gonna have here, uh, this one can also be, when this is paired with the D7200 uh, for digital work, uh, you have to factor in the crop factor of 1.5 when you use this lens. But anyway, we're not done with the pieces in this little box. Probably gonna do like so to have a little bit of room left. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on the, on the floor. And uh, here you have the power pack that is supposed to be used with this lens. And it's uh, quite simple. You have the three pin input and you have a four and quarter power switch and a master on off button. The only thing I think I'm gonna do with this is that I'm gonna replace this power cord because it has not aged well. And there is a switch in the back for mains power. It can be changed between 100 and 240 volt uh, power uh, from the power outlet. So it can be used in many different countries. But anyway, I'm just gonna take this crusty extension cord and uh, put it in like so. And we're gonna have it a little bit of a test run on it. First, I'm gonna introduce the newest little acquisition in my Nikon family. It is uh, a camera that I saw Matt Granger actually remove uh, review. <laughs> And also I think Kenneth Weidstein has reviewed this as well. It's the Nikon FE. I know that a lot of people like the Nikon FM, but I think the FE is a little bit more of a pro camera because it has exposure compensation. I don't think the FM has that one. So anyway, we're gonna put the Nikkor, uh, medical Nikkor C on this camera. So let's see what we can do. <clears throat> Uh, there is no film in this camera and uh, there is not even a battery, so I'm going to use it on the manual 90 uh, setting so, uh, because this is going to use flash, so it's more of a demonstration purpose than anything else. This lens is also very lightweight and we're going to see here, we're going to remove the little, little cover for the three pin connector. And also, we are going to unscrew the PC sync port cover here. Then first, you can just screw in the PC sync port in the lens. And the other 
part of the cable you insert in the PC sync port on the camera, such. And then we have the power connector, you put like so. And also, let's see here, yeah, in the power pack, such. Let's see here. Clever little storage compartment as such. Let's see here now. <clears throat> so basically, here is the setup that was used uh, back in the day. And uh, let's see, yeah. And it works. Here we go, turning this on. I think the capacitors might have some juice still in them. Um, you know that this system is completely charged uh, when the little yellow LED is uh, lit up in the front here by the power port. Here we go, and let's see. Yeah. It's a really good piece of kit as such, and there it is, and we're gonna put it on full. And you have a front cover here for the lens. Let's just unscrew it. I haven't been able to figure out how many lens elements are in this camera, but anyway, it is a, a 200 millimeter lens, so let's see if I can find... Yeah, there it should be, yeah. Something like that, and... Uh, say cheese. There we go. Uh, yeah, so this is the setup for the basic photography, but then in order to get to the different types of macro, you have, <clears throat> there is no AI tab on this lens, so it can be used with both uh, AI and non-AI cameras. So the reason for it then, the way you set it, is that you have a couple of uh, settings here and uh, <clears throat> how you do it is that you you put your ASA or the same as ISO here so if I have it with 200 ISO film you put it so this little diamond symbol corresponds to the 200 millimeter well, the 200 ASA marking but then you have this silver ring in the front as well that that is for the uh, amount of magnification that you have at the moment. So if in, for instance, if I would take this blue lens, which is the one type, the one time mag magnification, I screw that on to the front, do it a little bit carefully here, not cross threading it. There we go, it is on. And uh, then I will turn the silver dial until it reads a blue one that corresponds with the band on the lens element and then I can choose the uh, <clears throat> the aperture that I want and this one goes from aperture 5.6 all the way to aperture 4.45 uh, so if you have ever done any macro you know that you by its very nature you have a very shallow depth of field in macro photography so having a 45 <clears throat> macro setting, that is kind of good to have, as in my opinion. And also then I think that this band here corresponds to the different uh, flash uh, settings. So you can go from uh, flash 1, which is full power, and you can go down to 1 15th power, depending on the combination. So basically, so you can go down then to 1 6th power if you have F8. So we're gonna see here now, and if I'm focusing, uh, rather this is not gonna be fo in focused in any way, but if I just point it at the camera and I press this, you can see the four, uh, you know, modeling lights that are built into this lens. And of course, when I click the shutter, there we go you can feel that we have the, you can see that we have the flash working. So basically that's it. And uh, also, uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, grid uh, in the front here with the different colors. These colors 
corresponds to the different uh, filaments on, or rather the different colors on the magnification filters that you put on this lens. So what you actually do is that if you want the full, uh, the full three type uh, magnification, you put this on the number three setting and you actually combine the blue lens with this purple lens because the blue lens will give you one times, one times macro and then you take this one which is two times macro and that together gives you three times macro. So if you want something that is going to be, you know, one to, you know, three times, three times larger than what you would actually see it in real life, then yeah, this is the setting for it. So there we go. But what is macro really? We need to address that little notion as well because it has been a term that has been uh, thrown around quite often when it comes to photography and macro. Uh, a true macro, a true macro by its definition, is something that reproduces something, uh, or rather the subject, to a one-to-one -one ratio. So if something is one square centimeter in reality, it will be represented as one square centimeter on the image medium that is used. So if you are using a 35 mil, which is this, or an APS-C crop factor uh, camera like the Nikon D7200, uh, you will actually have the same aspect, the same kind of reproduction uh, regardless. Uh, so one square centimeter in the real world will be one square centimeter in the macro world. But this lens being specialized for medical use and so on uh, can actually then be, you know, going down to a full uh, three times macro, which means that if something is uh, one square centimeter, it will basically be reproduced as three a three square centimeter uh, square <clears throat> on the image medium and then also you will have the crop factor of the D7200 which will make it even a more impressive um, you know macro lens for that type of work but keep in mind also that when you do that you can also have a little bit of byproducts like for instance when you have something that is very greatly lit with a very close down aperture like this one is 45 f45 you will be aware very quickly that you have stains on your image sensor and that's something i have been experiencing playing with this lens on the d7200 but that's kind of nature of the beast really so yeah that's all for me for now i think i'm gonna do some b-roll on this brilliant piece of kit uh, that really has piqued my curiosity into the world of macro photography. I got this uh, entire kit for a very good deal price on Tradera as I said. I think I paid 1600 Swedish for all this with the bag and uh, yeah I think it's kind of lucky. The thing I'm gonna do is replace the power cable I believe because it has seen better days. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, nice that I got it with a complete set of, of uh, you know, magnifying filters as well. And as I said, this one, one, one eighth type macro, uh, this one, one uh, fourth, one sixth, uh, half, and then we have the full one and the two stop macro, or rather two times macro on the camera but lens, but I'm going to remove them. Yeah, but then it also shows on the lens various combination of these filters uh, in uh, different ways so you can get everything in between. So for different types of photography, you can always put it in the type of macro that is best suited for the job at or the task at hand. So yeah, this camera as far, or rather this setup could have been used in different types of surgeries and it can also have been used through autopsies and other types of uh, medical 
great work. And that's also a little bit when I come into Leonard Nielsen and his fabulous macro and electron microscope photography. But all in all, this uh, I think is gonna be it for me. And as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So take care from take care from now on. Bye. Just like this.